Hey guys, Sneaky Snake here, Brothers in Arms, World of Warships, and in today's video, we're going to take a look into the next installment in our community replay series, and we have a replay here from Scotty00, playing in the Tier 5 Premium Soviet Destroyer, the Gunamayashi. He's divisioned up with a couple of his friends, playing in the Fujin and the Mitsuki, two Tier 5 Premium and Non-Premium Japanese Destroyers, and they're playing some domination here on the map fault line. So if you'd like to send a replay into us, please send it to BIAWorldOfWarships at gmail.com. Please include the replay file, post-game screenshots, a brief description of the battle if you so desire, and then if you'd like myself or Spider to do the commentary on it, you can also request for that as well. So, the Gremmy, as it's affectionately known here in World of Warships, is, well, I guess in the lightest possible sense, a damn good vessel. You get four 130 millimeter guns that have a pretty good rate of fire, but they also have an old, unnerfed Soviet destroyer fire chance of 9% base, which is pretty freaking ridiculous. And when you have 12 rounds per minute from each gun, you're going to be able to get 48 shells downrange every minute. And uh, yeah, they have a wonderful high explosive alpha damage because again, they're 130 millimeters and they're the largest guns on any destroyer here at tier 5. And you also have a very good uh, range on these guns. You can get it uh, to some pretty ridiculous ranges. His uh, firing range on this one, in this replay, is 11.9. However, the Gremmy can get, I think, to over 14 kilometers if you attach advanced firing training on it. It's absolutely ridiculous. And uh, it really does play like a high-tier Soviet destroyer, except when you realize you're at tier 5. But it's not just the guns on the ship, which are incredible. It also has a decent amount of hit points at 13,100. And that is without survivability expert, so you can get that up to a nice little 15,000-ish. Um, the ship also comes equipped with 8-kilometer torpedoes. Yes, these torpedoes are the 8-kilometer variant of the Soviet destroyers. Most of them, all the way up to, as far as I remember correctly, at least Tier 7, all the Soviet DDs only have 4-kilometer torpedoes. However, these 5339 variants have an 8-kilometer range. They go at a rather paltry speed of 55 knots and they only do 14,400 uh, damage a pop, but they're still very capable torpedoes. And when you also realize that the Enoriyashi uh, has very good concealment, which is also something that is very uh, unique to Soviet destroyers, uh, especially once you start going up the tech trees, this thing has a detectability range of 6.1. So not only are you a long-range beast at being able to hit stuff, but you can also stealth torp, and that's basically what makes this thing one of the best hybrid torpedo and gunboats in the game. Very much like a Fletcher, albeit with much lower turret traverse and uh, rate of fire. But regardless of that, this thing is exceptionally capable in the right hands, and this replay you're going to see here today is downright ridiculous. Oh, and I forgot to mention, it also retains normal Soviet characteristics, uh, like a very, very nice speed, and even some troll armor. So this thing pretty much has the entire package. So all of his buddies have moved very violently over into Alpha, they have secured it, and what do you know, the first shell that hits starts a fire. <laughs> That's uh, not unnormal. And uh, yeah, he's getting some good shots here at this other Gomiyashi, and uh, when two of these things get into a one-on-one -on -one fight, it's a very interesting duel, that's for sure. Simply because uh, they can both hurt each other exceptionally hard. And you can see here, that Gramiyashi is taking quite the pounding, and the majority of the damage done has come at the hands of Scotty00. I'll just refer to him as Scotty for the rest of this. And it appears he doesn't have uh, last stand either, so yeah. This guy's kind of screwed. There's really nothing he's going to be able to do. I'm surprised he hasn't even popped his smoke yet, uh, but I digress. He's uh, definitely going to be uh, getting taken out here rather shortly. So at this point in the game, it's 3.30 to 2.85. His team is also capturing Objective Charlie. Again, they've since had uh, Alpha for quite some time, and nobody has moved in on Bravo. But now, as a Clemson appears, five kilometers away, he's going to drop both of his torpedoes. He's got three torpedoes per launcher, so a total of six, which is not a large amount. But again, the fact that you can stealth torp is something that should be dutifully noted. Excuse me for that. <coughs> So, he goes undetected as the uh, Clemson manages to get back inside. He takes a couple hits from the Gunamayashi that's sitting in that smoke screen. So, two different torpedo sets going into two different parts of the smoke. And if anybody knows World of Warships for a second, yeah, you do not sit in your smoke screen when destroyers are about because you just need to assume that torpedoes are in on the way. And unfortunately for that Gunamayashi, he, uh, he took a torpedo. <laughs> what do you know? 
Oh man, the Clemson takes one too. Two kills, two torpedoes. Ugh. Sounds like the name of a suggestive video, am I right? Yeah, about that. So, he manages to secure almost the double strike on the Clemson and the Gamayashi, and now he has taken some shots here at the enemy Nicholas, the Tier 5 American Destroyer. And although the Nicholas has a better rate of fire, better turret traverse and all that, you can see here the alpha damage from all the shells that are impacting that guy in the hull. And this is what the Gunamiyashi is so good for. You know, each shell is hit for like 600 damage. And when you're able to land multiple shells on target, you can just absolutely obliterate whatever you're shooting at. And right there, he gets his third kill, his third destroyer kill of the game, taking care of three of the four enemy ships killed so far in the game. He's up to 22,000 damage. So, what a start here for Scotty. I mean... That's just common practice. You do not sit in your smoke screen when there's enemy destroyers about. But for some reason, well, I guess I shouldn't be too surprised. This is the lower tier, and you do find stuff like that to happen quite often. So, oh well. <laughs> but uh, one thing to note, though, when that one torpedo hit the uh, the Clemson, even with the 14,400 alpha damage, which is okay uh, for tier 5, it still had enough alpha damage to be able to kill him in one torpedo. It must have hit right underneath the midsection of the boat and split it in half. That's really the only way to kill a destroyer with one torpedo at the lower tiers. You have to hit them right in the middle of the ship, and that's exactly what happened. So at this point, he's heading over to Objective Bravo now. However, the enemy team has also killed off well, the majority of his ships, too. Five of them, to be exact. Uh, it's 316 to 275. However, they are capturing C, and they are also capturing B. There's that Wyoming and then the Koenig over there. So he's going over to try and contest this cap. So we still got plenty more game to go here. But quite honestly, he's already going to get a nice hefty chunk of XP because he's done the majority of the damage to all of those destroyer kills. So yeah, you can see here, um, it's nice in a Soviet destroyer to have this good concealment. And I know good concealment and Soviet destroyer generally aren't used in the same sentence, but uh, it's nice to have, to be honest with you. And my buddy Puddin has this ship. He was a closed beta tester, and uh, yeah, he did exceptionally well in it, and he loves this thing, and every time he plays it, it seems like he's always kicking <laughs> large amounts of butt. So I guess I shouldn't be surprised that Scotty is having very similar results. So at this point, he's decided to smoke up. He's now going to try to get some fires going on this Koenig, and uh, <laughs> what do you know? One shell hits, and it already starts a fire. He's, you can see he's already got four fires with only 24 shells hit. So that fire chance, yeah, RNG's helping out a little bit, but it's ridiculous. And this is what Soviet DDs used to be like, and there you go, another fire set on the Wyoming. So he's getting some shots at that guy, trying to secure the kill. And that Koenig, it appears, has used his damage control. Yes, he has, but the torpedoes, are they going to hit? Nope, a little too far off the, uh, the bow section of that German battleship. Now he's going to switch his focus and his fire back to the Koenig. So now he's going to get all of his guns to play. But you can see there, he does have to maneuver quite a bit just to get his guns into play. Because the turret traverse is one of the very, uh, very few weaknesses that this ship does possess. And more shells flying in. And I wouldn't be surprised if he started yet another fire here shortly. Because, well, that's what the stick does. And there you get another fire set. So now that Koenig is going to be burning for a little bit, but obviously it's only a tier 5 destroyer fire. It's not going to be taking too many hit points off him. At this point, the enemy team has captured Objective Charlie, and now his team is in quite a bit uh, quite a bit of a situation here. Torpedoes do go flying in, though. I actually don't recall whose torpedoes those were. Uh, but either way, the Koenig loses quite a bit of hit points, and now he's launching his torpedoes yet again. And you can also see that uh, the Gamayashi has a pretty competitive reload on its torpedoes. It's 1 minute and 8 seconds for it to reload. So that's actually pretty darn good. The Koenig is now flooding and on fire, so he's pretty much screwed there. And now he's going to switch his focus back to the Wyoming, and he does manage with the fire to take care of the Koenig. And now he's going to try to run this Wyoming down and take care of business. He's only got 4,600 hit points left, but he is using his damage control. However, he only fired one spread of torpedoes at that uh, Koenig, so now he'll have another set to deal with this Wyoming if he's not able to get more fires and take care of them with the guns beforehand. However, there are more torpedoes coming in from the torpedo planes, and so I don't know if the Wyoming is going to be able to torpedo beat here. We shall see. He does manage to go right in between the first one, so now Scotty's getting ready to drop another set of torpedoes here. The Wyoming continues to turn to the right to dodge the torpedo planes uh, from the carrier, but it appears that the CV will be able to take him out, and that indeed happens. The Hosho getting the kill. So unfortunately for Scotty, his torpedoes will not be able to do anything. 
However, he is now capturing Objective Bravo, and it's four versus five. His team is still down. All of the ships that went over Sands for the Kaiser that's still alive got absolutely obliterated over on the eastern part of the map. So, at this point, four kills, 40,000 damage, a wonderful game. This would be, if he were to die right now, this would be a wonderful game here. But, again, there's still plenty more that he's going to have to do to help his team to victory here. So he's definitely going to get an objective Bravo captured and get those points going. And then it's going to force the enemy team to come over to Bravo as the Danae's flooding from torpedoes manages to take out the Kaiser. So, yeah, at this point, it's three versus five. And he's going to have to hold off five or at least four other enemy ships that will be coming over to objective Bravo. But he's going to get the solo cap here in seven seconds. You can see the pair of Wyoming's coming over. The majority of health on one and all of the health on the other. But there we go. He does get the solo base cap, so that's very good stuff. And now he's actually going to be very proactive, and he's going to go after and try and hunt these guys down. And this is a very bold play. If I were playing in this ship, I would just be sitting around Bravo waiting for the enemy team to come. However, he does not get the memo, and he's going to be aggressive, but we'll see if it pays off for him, certainly. So he's moving into position to drop torpedoes. I mentioned it in my Fletcher video. If an enemy ship is about two kilometers outside of your torpedo your torpedoes effective distance but they're moving directly at you you can afford to drop them because by the time that uh, your torpedoes get to the end of their range chances are that the uh, ship that's sailing right at it uh, you know they've closed the distance sufficiently enough and all of a sudden 4.7 kilometers off his port bow the enemy kamikaze appears now this is an interesting engagement because he doesn't have the turret traverse as mentioned a couple times before and uh he also doesn't have the best rate of fire. This isn't an American destroyer rate of fire where he would be able to absolutely pulverize that kamikaze, but he's also got to be careful for the torpedoes, which are indeed coming, so he's just going to barely turn back to starboard and dodge those torpedoes as they all go off the starboard side. But now he's got the Wyoming, at least one of them 4.8 kilometers off his starboard side. So at this point, he's going to have to smoke up or he's going to die here. He only has 7,000 hit points left, so yeah, he's not going to continue to shoot at the Kamikaze because that guy did shoot, but there he goes, into detectability, or undetected, I should say. But he does set a fire because why not? And now he's launching his torpedoes here at the Wyoming, and we'll see if he's going to be able to land these torpedoes because these, these are very important. If he's not able to kill that Wyoming, he's going to be able to get within the 2-kilometer detectability range uh, by the time uh, that his torpedoes uh, were to potentially hit the ship, and then he would be absolutely sunk, no pun intended. But... This is low tier, and the Wyoming sailing straight and stupid. He manages to pick up Confederate, Devastating Strike, and Kraken Unleashed all on one deadly torpedo salvo. Very awesome stuff. Now, the Danae's torpedoes are incoming as well, but he doesn't have to worry about those. And now he's going full man mode, and he is going out of the smoke here. But we'll see what he's going to be able to do here. And excuse me, that was the Kuma. I'm not sure where the Danae went. I guess it got killed off, and I didn't realize it. However, this is a Soviet destroyer with 130mm guns. And he has loaded the armor piercing. Yeah, 2,500 damage done with every citadel. One, two, three. And that Kuma is getting obliterated. And this is something that is pretty unique to Soviet destroyers here. You can do it with the Nicholas if you get really, really close. But look at that. Five citadels tossed into that Kuma. Up to 87,000 points of damage. And he picked up his sixth kill of the game awesome stuff right there showcasing the wonderful potency of soviet ap and this is not something that's just unique to gremiashi also the tier 5 soviet destroyer podvoisky now is able to do exactly that and it's something that is uh <laughs> if you're a cruiser player it's easy to forget that uh you can get absolutely shredded by these 130 millimeter guns because they have stellinium shells and they have wonderful penetration at this point, he does get detected again. However, the Kamikaze also does, and once again, it's due to the great concealment on this ship that is able to almost spot that guy at the same time that he spots him. So there's absolutely no way that this Kamikaze is going to be able to get away, and it's only a matter of time before he gets killed off. And there we go. He picks up his seventh kill of the game with four shells, hitting that Tier 5 Japanese destroyer. And now he's getting ready to launch another salvo of torpedoes here, this time at the other Wyoming. And that guy has no idea that his torpedoes are being dropped, or maybe he does, but he just does go undetected. And I'm not sure what this Wyoming is doing. He's not changing his course. It doesn't appear that he's changing his speed. And once again, you can just chalk this down to people that aren't low tiers and they just haven't figured the game out yet. So I'll be, I won't be as harsh on this Wyoming, but you know, it's something that you have to learn. Pierce three torpedoes, slam home as he picks up the high caliber, 124,000 points of damage done Five minutes and 30 seconds left in the game. That Wyoming is on perilous, perilous, gosh, 
I always screw up one word when I'm talking, don't I? He's on very perio... Yep, I'm just gonna stop. <laughs> I'm just gonna stop. This is freaking embarrassing. I can't talk right now. Pardon me for that. He's on very low health is what I'm trying to get at. He's at 7,000 health. He is using his damage control, but now uh, Scotty's gonna shoot his guns. Hopefully he'll be able to start a fire. He is shooting some armor piercing, and right there, 825 damage on that one shell. And if he also shoots at the bow, he's still able to go through it. His American battleships at this tier have... Uh, very, very poor bow armor, and you're able to go through it with AP at these kind of close ranges. However, his torpedoes are reloaded, so we'll see if he's getting ready to drop the fish, but it doesn't appear, well, now he is going to, and these torpedoes are guaranteed kills. There's nothing that Wyoming is going to be able to do. He pulls a tactical knotser there, eh, well, kind of. He's like, hitting the invisible wall, and before the Wyoming is able to shoot at him, he picks up his eighth kill of the game, 132,000 points of damage done. This guy has been absolutely ridiculous. Even the enemy team, good job, wow, and good job, Scotty, carrying the load and his team to victory here. So it's only a matter of time before the game ends, but we'll see if he's going to be able to find the carrier. The most amount of kills I've ever had in the game was with a Nicholas, and I had eight of them. So if he's able to find this carrier, he's going to have one up on me, and I got to say, that's that's ridiculous. I wish that they had some sort of metal like uh, World of Tanks does, where if you get a ridiculous amount of kills in the game, you get something for it. I think that'd be cool. And then, of course, if you look in the comments, Strunk Spillinium Destroyer, comrade. Yes, yes it is. Chances are this thing's never going to get uh, nerfed. Uh, but it's a it's a premium, and, well, I'm sure that would cause some sort of uproar. So he's not going to have to worry about that, probably. And there we go. The Langley does get detected. He's 14 kilometers away. So now he's just trying to get there to maybe steal this kill. I don't know. The carrier is also taking his planes, the Hosho, that is, into torpedo him, so he switch into the high explosive. And another thing to note is that uh, this Stellinium high explosive is able to uh, get citadels on carriers. The carriers at these low tiers have so poor armor, uh, especially around the bulkheads and whatnot, that uh, yeah, uh, you could get citadels with the high explosive. It's pretty ridiculous. Shells are flying in on that guy uh, from the Miyogi in the back. He does not hit. However, the carrier is now hitting him with some torpedoes. So now Scotty is going to open fire here. And it doesn't appear that the CV is going to get the kill regardless, so it appears he will be able to get a nice kill steal here. And yes, he's on 11,000 hit points, and he is flooding, but we'll see here. Scotty's going to be able to snag this kill and get his ninth frag of the game, which would be absolutely ridiculous. And you can see here the decent rate of fire, and hopefully the fire chance will be coming here. Seven fires out of 88 shell hits, which is a pretty decent ratio. And what do you know, there it is, a citadel on a Langley that's pretty angled away. More shells flying in. Will he be able to secure this kill? He's only on 1,000, 700, 500, and there we go. He gets the kill. What a performance by Scotty in the Grammy. Alrighty, guys. Taking a look now at the post-battle results. 537,000 bones received and just under 9,000 total XP. This was the first win of the day. Confederate, Kraken, two devastating strikes and high caliber. 139,000 damage done off of 92 shell hits and 9 torpedoes, showing you the excellent gunboat, torpedo boat hybrid capability that this ship possesses. He killed 9 out of 12 enemy ships, 7 fires, 6 citadels, 12 base defense ribbons, 1 solo cap, and 1 assisted base capture. Taking a look now at the team score, 2,973 base XP. I gotta hand it to you, Scotty. This is the highest base XP game that I've ever seen for a ship at tier 5. Almost getting 3k, that is mind-bogglingly absurd. It makes what the Miyogi and the Hosho did on your team look like child's play. So, wonderful performance for you. Thank you very much for sending in this replay, and I really enjoyed watching it, even if I couldn't pronounce that damn word. <laughs> anyway, uh, the Sneaky Snake here for Brothers in Arms World of Warships signing off. Please comment, like, maybe subscribe to the channel. All of it is very much appreciated, and we'd also like to once again thank you guys for helping us get to 1k subs, and uh, all your support has been uh, very much appreciated. Have a good day.